1966, Joseph Fletcher's book, Situation Ethics was published and offered an alternative view to moral decision-making. Like, Natural Moral Law, advocated by Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century, it was based on Christianity, but the principles differed. Founders, Thomas Aquinas, Joseph Fletcher Approach, Absolutist, Relativist Type, Deontological, Teleological Supported by, the Roman Catholic Church, Liberal Christians For the OCRA level paper, you should be able to apply both contrasting theories to the topic of euthanasia. From a natural law point of view Euthanasia is absolutely wrong, the act itself is intrinsically bad. Well, from a situation ethics point of view, I think euthanasia can or cannot be good depending on the situation. Situation ethics is the middle way between legalism and antinomianism. Legalism is excessive adherence to law, such as the Mosaic laws found in the Bible and antinomianism, literally means against law. Joseph Fletcher was born in 1905 in Jersey. He was ordained in the Episcopal Church in America, which is Anglican. He became the president of the Euthanasia Society of America from 1974 to 1976. He is said to have converted to humanism and eventually atheism. He died in 1991. Joseph Fletcher was influenced by Paul Tillich who advocated using agape moral decision-making, Karl Barth who advocated personalism, and William Temple who also advocated personal freedom and love. So how does it work? What is the criteria? Most actions develop from a thought. Joseph Fletcher introduced the six propositions or fundamental principles. The six propositions can be thought of as the thought that then leads to action. They are Number 1. Only one thing is intrinsically good, namely, love, nothing else at all. Number 2. Their ruling norm of Christian decision is love, nothing else. Number 3. Love and justice are the same, for justice is love distributed, nothing else. Number 4. Love wills the neighbor's good whether we like him or not. Number 5. Only the end justifies the means, nothing else. Number 6, love decides there and then, love should applied situationally not prescriptively. The moral situation is what needs to be considered first. These are thoughts. The six propositions or fundamental principles, leads to what is known as the four working propositions, which can be thought of as application, thoughts in action. Number 1, pragmatism, taking practical measures. Number 2, Relativism, rules are not fixed or absolute. Number 3, Personalism, people matter more than laws and rules. And number 4, Positivism, not following any creed or law, but knowing it is the right thing to do. Conscience also should be applied, similar to the natural law theory, Fletcher believes individual conscience should be utilized, this translates as reason making moral judgments. Michelle Kors allowed for a TV crew to document her assisted suicide. This can be searched for on YouTube. Michelle was not terminally ill, but suffered from a number of ailments, as described in her documentary. Was this the morally right thing to do? One would first have to consider the six propositions. Was assisting Michelle Kors to end her life done out of unconditional love? Because France does not legalize euthanasia, Michelle went to Switzerland. Did love replace the law in France? Was there any injustice in her case? Was Erica, the woman who assisted Michelle's suicide attached or related to her in some way? Would Erica benefit from her death? Did the end, Michelle's death, justify the means, being given pentobabital to drink? Was Michelle's case looked at individually? Once these thoughts have been considered, one can then apply the four working principles. Pragmatism relativism, personalism, positivism and conscience. Another case to consider might be the Michael Jackson case. 
Michael Jackson in an interview with Martin Basher, said the most loving thing to do was to share your bed with children. Are there any issues with his philosophy? Consider the six propositions and then apply the four working principles. What do you think people would say if I said, well, I've invited some of my daughter's friends round or my son's friends round and they're going to sleep in the bed with me tonight? That's fine. What do you think their parents would say? If they're wacky, they would say, you can't, but if you're a close family, like your family, you know them well, and, um, and, uh... But, Michael, I wouldn't like my children to sleep in anybody else's bed. Well, I wouldn't mind if I knew the person well, and I, like, if I'm very close to Barry Gibb, Paris and Prince can stay with him any time. My children sleep with other people all the time. And you're happy with that? Fine with it. They're honest. They're sweet people. They're not Jack the Ripper. Pragmatism. Is it practical to allow children to share their beds with adults? Relativism. Avoid words like never and always. Was Michael Jackson demonstrating Christian agape love or another type of love? Positivism. Are you free of negative thoughts and blind obedience to Christian principles? Does your Christian faith come before reason? Reason should not be the basis for faith in God, but work within it. Personalism, people come first, the people involved in this case, that is Michael Jackson and children should come first before any laws about adults sleeping with children. And, and I'm going to quote here, why can't you share your bed? The most loving thing to do is to share your bed with, with someone. Yes. As we sit here today, do you still think that it's acceptable to share your bed with children? Of course. Of course, why not? If you're going to be a pedophile, if you're going to be Jack the Ripper, if you're going to be a murderer, it's not a good idea. That I'm not. That's how we were raised. And I, I didn't sleep in the bed with the child. Even if I did, it's okay. I slept on the floor. I gave the bed to the child. I would never stop helping and loving people the way Jesus said to. He said, continue to love, always love, bring on the children, imitate the children, not childish, but childlike. Opponents and proponents. Situation ethics was rejected by the Roman Catholic Church and the majority of the Anglican Church, Pope Pius XII. It was banned from being taught in universities in 1956, Bishop John Robinson who was at first an advocate, later rejected it and William Barclay. It was however advocated by William Temple, Paul Tillich, Bishop John Robinson, Rudolf Bultmann, Bernard Hoos, 